guys, it's Steve here from Coils and Coins Detecting. I'm going to do a bit of a different video today. I thought I'd do a bit of a video on testing gold with the acid kit. Now, I've never really used one of these before. I have seen them around and I, um, I know people who have used them. Um, and I read up a little bit about them. Um, and yeah, it's not an exact science, but it's, you know, it's not a bad way to determine whether or not your item is gold or not gold and to give you a little bit of an idea on um, what carrot it might be. So the way it works generally um, with gold is that 24 carat is deemed to be pure gold. Well it's 99.99% pure anyway there probably are some you know, impurities in there but they're, they're so small that you know, we're just going to round it up to 100%. So 24 carat gold is 100% gold now, if you were to halve that and, and go to 12 carat, well, that would be 50% gold. So 50% gold and 50% other materials, other, other metals. So typically they would include things like silver, copper, uh, nickel, palladium sometimes, different metals of that, that type would be mixed together with the 50% gold to give, you, uh, to give you the item. And then there are some other fairly common ones like 9 carat gold, which is 37.5% gold, 18 carat gold, which is 75% gold. And so, and there are some others in there, 14K, which is about 58%. So with the gold, uh, you then have the mixture of other, other metals, as I mentioned, silver, copper, nickel, palladium, possibly others. Obviously, there are also rings that are made of, you know, 925 sterling silver, 100% um, silver or pretty close to 100% silver, uh, or 92.5% actually, and then you know other alloys in amongst that to bring it up to the 100% content. So what we're gonna do is use these acids here to determine um, what, roughly what carat gold these, these rings are. Now, all of these rings I found metal detecting, every one of them, and um, you've probably seen me find those in some of my videos. So from the top down, is what I think is going from 0% uh, gold or very close to it right down to 18 karat gold is the highest gold content ring I've found, this bottom one. So this is this is a gold plated 925 silver ring. Uh, this is hallmark 9 karat gold. Uh, this one's also a hallmark 9 karat gold. This is unknown and this is probably the reason why I bought this kit because I wanted to determine whether or not this was gold and if so, roughly what carat gold it might be. And this bottom ring I found in New South Wales a few years ago, it's marked 18 carat gold and it's got that nice little opal in there, uh, which is a little bit worn and damaged by the, the sand, but it's still quite a nice ring, that one. This one here, nine carat gold, it's got some kind of blue stone or glass in it, um, made to look like, you know, like a real gem. Uh, and this, this uh, 925, uh, I haven't tested that stone. I don't believe it's going to be a diamond. It's going to be cubic zirconia or glass or something. I don't think they put real diamonds in 925 um, gold-plated rings, but I could be wrong. I'll, one day I'll test that. I might, get a, I might get a surprise. Anyway, so the way this test works is we've got the four acids here. Now, these are nitric acid. We've got 10 carat, 14 carat, 18 carat, and 22 carat acid. And we've got a, um, a test stone. Now I've got the three by six test stone. You can get smaller ones, you can get larger ones, but this is the stone I have here. This whole kit, the four acids and the stone, cost me about $60 delivered, so uh, that's not too bad. And I know you can get test kits with silver test and I think um, maybe testing other, um, other precious metals possibly as well. So this is one way to get a bit of an idea of whether what you have is gold and roughly the carrot that it might be. The only other way to really f do it accurately is with an XRF scanner. And I'm not going into detail about what that is, but most of the reputable jewelers will have an XRF scanner and they can look at the, uh, the material and analyze the elements that make it up so they are extremely accurate. And that's you know, what you would need to do to find out exactly what uh, the metal was, whether it was gold and what carrot it might be. So the way this test works is you scratch the gold onto the stone and then you apply the acid to the, uh, to the gold or material that's left behind on the stone. Now the idea is the nitric acid will dissolve the impurities in the gold. So it doesn't 
nitric acid doesn't dissolve gold uh, directly, but it will dissolve the impurities. So it'll dissolve the silver, the copper, any other metal that's in, in the, uh, the alloy. So what we're trying to do is determine how much of the material is gold and how much of it is not gold. And by putting the acid on it, it's going to eat away at that material and leave us with the gold. And now if the gold's bright and strong and the line stays really golden, then it's obviously a higher quality gold, um, higher percentage gold. And if it eats it away completely, then obviously it was made up of more impurities than gold or completely non-gold and that'll just um, disappear. So what I'm gonna do is scratch um, a line on this stone with each of these rings. And then we're gonna apply the acid and we'll see what happens. So first ring is this, this top one, which I know is not gold. It's, uh, it's like I said, 925. So I'm just gonna scratch it on the edge of the band here. Now I'm gonna scratch it across. I'm gonna do a fairly wide scratch. Oh, it's a bit wild, isn't it? Oh, we'll just do that. Bear in mind, obviously, if you're scratching things like this, you're gonna you're gonna damage the item or take gold off it. That's the whole point of it. So if you're not wanting to do that with something that's actually a nice piece of jewelry, probably don't scratch it on the on the stone. Um, the other thing, obviously, if it's gold plated, the gold plating is gonna come off and you're gonna leave you the silver behind. And that's you can see that on this ring, it does does have some. Um, gold look to it but in places it's worn through and that's silver underneath okay now this one i think is is nine carat gold i believe it's nine carat gold is marked that way so we'll scratch this off and you'll notice here possibly maybe that it's leaving a golden line behind whereas that top one left a silver line behind so that's an indication of what the material is made of this one is a squashed nine carat gold ring that I found metal detecting in the bush. So I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna put that, scratch that across there. This is not very scientific, I know, and it's not very neat either. So anyway, we'll see how we go. I might even need to re-scratch these properly um, to do a better test, but we'll do this to starters. I just want to be able to do enough of a line so I can put all the acids down in a row, the four different acids, and not have them overlap each other or touch each other. That's the, that's the theory. Um, okay, now the unknown gold uh, ring here, which is quite heavy, I might say. I think it's gold, and I'm guessing it's going to be between, I don't know, 12 and 14. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So we'll scratch this one. Scratch a line across here. Quite wide, quite a wide line. Normally you wouldn't scratch a line this wide, but I just want to try and make it as uh, as obvious as I can as to the um, to the reactions of the acid onto the gold. I'm noticing here as I scratch this gold ring that it's a darker golden colour than the one above it. Um, if I tilt it a bit, you might be able to see that in this light. It's a bit hard. But this line here is definitely more golden than that one. That's a lighter gold. That one's a little bit lighter again. And the silver ring obviously is a silver gray color, not gold at all. I'm mixing these up. There we go. And then the last one is an 18 carat. Um, it's quite fine. It's quite a fine ring, quite a fine band. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with rubbing this one. And I'll just rub it across there. I'll leave enough of enough gold behind to be able to do this test. That'll probably do. All right, so I've got my five lines. I'll take, again, I'll tilt it up. That bottom line's probably the goldest of them all, which would make sense. And the other ones are less and less gold as we go along. So what I'm gonna do now is apply the 10 carat nitric acid here, and then we'll go 14, 18, 22. And then we're gonna wait uh, a little while, and we're gonna see what the result is. So let's just put the 10 carat first down here like that, I'll spread that out. There's the 10 carat. Uh, the 14 next, oops, 14 next here. I wanna be a little bit careful that I don't get acid on myself or anything else for that matter. That will obviously make a mess. 18 carat next. Put that one over this way a bit. Probably didn't need to make those lines quite that long that's all right we can do some more testing if we're unsure and then the strongest acids the 22 i'm going to put that down there like that 
All right, so we're gonna wait a little while and I can see a reaction happening there. There's a little bit of smoke came off, off there. I probably should be wearing some uh, mask. It's a bit, it's quite well ventilated in here, so I'm not too worried. Um, so we've got the four different acids. I can see straight away that this one here, the silver line is pretty much gone. Even with the weakest acid, it's gone. And that's what you'd expect to happen. At least that's what I'd expect it to, to happen is that it just eats away the silver. What we might do is give it five minutes, I'll come back, and then, um, yeah, you can have a look and see at the, what's going on. But I would imagine that some of these are gonna be eaten away. Uh, some of them aren't gonna be uh, eaten away. The gold's gonna shine through. Um, others might be a bit 50-50. So I'm gonna give that some time, and we'll come back shortly. All right, so we're back after about three minutes or so. So what I can tell from this, and the light again doesn't make it all that easy to see, but going from left to right, the 10 karat gold acid uh, has etched away the silver. Um, there's a little bit left. I didn't expect there to be any left, but yeah, there's a little bit left and it's discolored here. Uh, it's gone kind of a corroded color. So anyway, that's the, that's the silver. Now this one, um, the next line down is this nine carat gold ring, or the one that's marked nine carat, that one there. So the 10 carat uh, um, acid hasn't eaten that away completely. It's still, you can still see it there. I'll get something to point with just here. There's still gold showing there, but uh, if we go along to the 14 K acid, it's eaten, eaten it all away. So it is, um, yeah, it it's probably is 9 carat, a 9 to 10 carat or something like that. Um, and then you can see over here the 18 carat and the 22 carat have eaten it away completely. So um, through there and through there. So yeah, it is around 9 carat. The next ring down, which is the squashed one, uh, this one here, which is marked 9 carat. Pretty strong against the 10 carat acid, but then the 14 K acid's eaten it away. Um, so has the other ones as you'd expect. So it's probably stronger than this uh, this ring above it. So that is that's a strong nine carat, maybe even more like ten or eleven. I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely um, definitely nine minimum. Uh, the next ring down, which is the mystery ring, which I really am keen to know about, survived the nine uh, the ten carat acid, and it survived the fourteen k acid as well, pretty well actually. Um, the 18 carat acid has eaten it away a bit, and the 22 carat acid has definitely eaten it away. So, yeah, I I don't know. That's really a strong result against the 14K. Could it be 18K? If we compare it to the one below it, which is marked as 18K, it's a very similar look to it um, in terms of how much it's faded. So that mystery ring could be an 18 carat gold ring, you know, or close to 18 carat gold. It's definitely more than nine, and it's definitely gonna say more than 14, so, hmm. But the 22 carats eaten it away, mostly. And it ate away all the 18 carat gold ring here as well, which is what you'd expect. So the, the, the ring that's marked 18 carat is still showing, uh, similar to that one. And then this one's, yeah, it's still there, it's faint. And it's very, very faint there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say our mystery ring is 18 carat. Uh, compared to a known 18 carat ring, it's reacted in the same way. So that's pretty interesting. I will take that to a jeweler, that mystery ring, just because I want to see how accurate we are with our estimation that that ring is 18 carat or close to 18 carat, given that that one is known to be 18 carat, and that's the reaction. It's similar, very similar. All right, so that's the test. Pretty cool, bit of fun. Um, I'll tilt it up a bit. This light doesn't make it all that easy. I should really be doing this from directly above, um, but I don't have that uh, availability, so this is what we get. But it's an interesting test nonetheless, and the longer we leave it, obviously, the more uh, more the acid is eating away. So it's been five, six, seven minutes since we put the acid on there, and start to see that it's definitely eating away some more than other uh, some more than the others, so the, the 14K has worked all its way through those two. The 9 carat rings, definitely not, um, they're definitely not above 9 carat. Um, 
well, they're not above 14 carats, sorry. They're, they're at least nine, possibly even 10. Um, even though they're marked nine, that's interesting. I would have thought it'd be the other way around. And here we've got the mystery ring uh, and the 18 carat ring. So, hmm, good fun. All right, I hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, yeah, if you're interested in testing gold that you, you're not sure about, you, you wanna do it yourself, uh, grab, a, grab a test kit. They're not that expensive. The acids last quite a long time if you keep them in the bottle, out of sunlight, keep them in a dark space, um, keep them cool. They should last you years. And there's enough acid to do several tests, hundreds of tests probably. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please drop us a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I do lots of metal detecting videos, um, sometimes some coin videos and other, other things related to, um, to metal detecting and coin collecting and all kinds of stuff, videos like this one. Hit the bell too if you uh, haven't already done that, just so you know when the next video comes out. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do some more cool videos down the track. So thanks for watching again. All the best, happy hunting, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now, guys.